What's up? I'm Triple Shoot. In the super quick guide, I'll be showing you how to optimize your NVIDIA control panel for the best possible performance on Windows. If you'd like to get even more performance out of your system, you'll find a Windows 10 and 11 optimization guide down below, as well as anything else that may help. Just keep in mind, a lot of the settings we change here won't have a huge impact on your system, but everything counts, and it's worthwhile having a look through them at least once. So let's go ahead and do it. Simply make sure that, first of all, your graphics driver is completely up to date from the NVIDIA website. I would also recommend running DDU to get a clean install of your graphics driver, and on top of that, using NV Clean Install to get a customized installation of your NVIDIA driver with everything else unnecessary stripped out of it, like Ansel and telemetry and things like that, so that you can have it customized for your specific needs, removing everything you're not going to explicitly use. Every small improvement adds together. You'll find links to those guides in the description down below. With all of that said, let's go ahead and get straight to the NVIDIA control panel. Right click your desktop and choose NVIDIA control panel here to open it up. If you don't have this on your system and you have the latest graphics driver installed, open up the Microsoft Store and inside of here, search for NVIDIA control panel where you should find it here. Simply install this and open it. When it opens up, you'll see something like this. Simply select the first tab over here, adjust image settings with preview and select over here, use my preference emphasizing, drag it to performance and click apply. Then right above it, choose use the 3D advanced image settings, apply once more and choose take me there here. This will take you to the manage 3D settings tab on the far left. Just keep in mind if you're on a laptop or something else like that, you you may be missing a lot of these settings here on the far left and on top of this you may also be missing different options here based on what kind of graphics card you have heck you may even have extra options here that i'm not able to cover in this video with my particular graphics card so just keep in mind if you see something extra or something is missing, just hover your mouse over the setting and you'll get a bunch of text right below it explaining exactly what it is and obviously how to change it. Usually you'll be pushing everything to the performance side anyways. This global settings tab over here changes the option for every program on your computer and the program settings tab over here is the same set of options but it allows us to customize options for each individual game or app on our system. I'd recommend choosing the best settings in the global tab and then fine tuning on the program settings tab if you need to change anything for any particular game. Most of the time, global settings is more than good enough. The first option that you may have that I'd highly recommend is image scaling. If you have this option, you should choose on here and click OK. Essentially, what this does is that it works like DLSS, FSR, etc. And it'll take a smaller game when you're playing in full screen with a lower resolution and it'll use AI magic to upscale it to the full resolution of your monitor. So if you have a 1080p monitor, you can drop a game to 720p, getting more FPS, and NVIDIA NIS will work like DLSS or FSR and blow it up to 1080p once more. Obviously, it won't be as high quality as DLSS, FSR, or anything built into the game, but it's still a great way to get extra performance while upscaling games that may not support it to begin with. It's a fantastic option to have. Leaving the sharpness at 50% is good enough, but you can choose to customize it here later. And on top of this, choosing the overlay indicator, if you tick this, in the very top left of your screen whenever NIS is working, as in you're in a full screen game with a lower resolution than your monitor, it'll have an icon in the top left to tell you that NIS is working. You can have this on to test it, but I would recommend turning this off eventually. Click OK and there we go. Running through these options relatively quickly, ambient occlusion should be turned off or to performance if you do want it controlled on a driver level, anisotropic filtering off, even though it has very little impact on games, FXAA turned off, otherwise it may look blurry, gamma correction should be turned on for better color and brightness in games, mode for anti-aliasing should also be turned off and that should turn off these next two options as well. Background application max frame rate you should leave off but you can customize this if you see fit. For example, if you tab out of a game into a browser or something like that, this when turned on should cap your game's frame rate to 30 fps or whatever you set it to here giving slightly better performance to other programs. Games sometimes have this built in like Call of Duty but not not all of them do. If you'd like this feature, it's here, but personally, I leave it off just in case it messes with OBS, streaming software, or anything like that in the background. I'll leave it as just off. Then, CUDA GPUs, I'd recommend leaving it as all, and CUDA SysMem fallback policy should be left as driver default. Scrolling down further, if you have DSR options here, you can customize these as you see fit or leave them all off for, I guess, better performance in games. 
This essentially allows you to play games at a higher resolution than your monitor and downscale to the actual correct resolution of your monitor, making much higher quality visuals, but of course at the cost of performance. For example, on a 1080p display, you can play a game at 4K resolution, crank it all the way down, compress all of that quality onto your monitor, and things should look a lot better than just playing at native 1080p. Obviously, you won't be using DSR at all unless you have a high-powered graphics card or you're playing very old games that allow you to crank up the resolution way higher than your actual monitor and get much better quality out of it. Just keep in mind, any option with DSR isn't going to get you any extra better performance. The smoothness over here is your preference. Usually, I leave it around 33%. That's good enough. Then, low latency mode. You should always have the set to on for the best possible input latency, although if a game offers NVIDIA reflex in it, such as Battlefield, Counter-Strike, Call of Duty, etc., those options that you choose in-game will overwrite the setting over here, so on is recommended. On some laptops, you may only get the Ultra option, and that's okay too. Usually, you'll choose the Ultra option, which is essentially on plus boost, if you have a much higher powered graphics card and a much lower powered CPU. Max frame rate, you should just leave as off, as games should be able to manage their frame rate, or preferably, if you're going to be locking the FPS for anything, you should do it with something like RTSS, which is River Tuna, which allows you to cap FPS and keep frame times much more stable than doing it from the NVIDIA control panel or even from the in-game options. And at this point, you may see something about NVIDIA G-Sync. What exactly is G-Sync? Well, it's like V-Sync, but managed by NVIDIA. If you're going to be playing single-player experiences with a G-Sync monitor, where you're running at lower frame rates than what your monitor can actually show, using G-Sync is a positive thing. But if you're playing competitive shooters and things like that, and you're getting way higher FPS than your monitor, leave G-Sync as set to off. This way, you should have a better input latency, and you're not going to wait any time in between frames, etc. I even had certain issues with things like OSU, where there were weird issues when G-Sync was enabled, as well as a couple of other programs. Usually, it's best to leave it off, even if your monitor specifically says, hey, I'm G-Sync enabled. In most cases, off is better than having it on at all. Then, multi-frame sampled MFAA. Leave this as set to off. Then, open GL GDI compatibility. Leave this as auto for the best compatibility in different OpenGL games. OpenGL rendering GPU should be set to auto-select or your most powerful NVIDIA graphics card. Then, scrolling down, power management mode should be left as normal, even though we do have a prefer maximum performance option. Essentially, if you choose this maximum performance, it's going to prevent your graphics card from resting when games are closed. It'll always be running at the highest power management mode state, meaning it's going to be creating a lot more heat, using a lot more electricity for nothing. Just leave it as normal, and later on, you can customize it on the program settings tab to have it turned on for different games where this is necessary. Refresh rate may be an option that you have here, just leave it as highest available. The shader cache size over here can be left as default, but you should set it to as big as possible, depending on the amount of space on your C drive. This allows shaders to be cached in game, allowing for faster loading, faster startup times, faster map loading times, and of course, a better stability while you're in game. Shaders only need to be made once, they can be cached and saved for later on. If you have this set to a really small size, they'll override shaders for different games, different maps, etc., causing some possible issues. Driver default is usually fine, but you can open up a new file browser, check your C drive, see how much free space you have, and set this accordingly. I don't mind using more space for better performance. I'll leave this as 100 gigabytes, which is the biggest option besides unlimited. Then, texture filtering and isotropic sample option. We'll be setting this to off. Negative LOD bias. We'll be setting to allow. Texture filtering quality. Quality is fine. You don't really need to select anything else here. Trilinear optimization should be left on. Threaded optimization, especially important, should be left as auto. As certain games do better with different threads and different scenarios, etc., they should manage themselves. Auto is good here. Triple buffering should be left as off and VSync off as well. This may be on for you. Make sure you set it off here for the best possible input latency in games. Obviously, you'll be turning off VSync in game as well, but this is at a driver level too. 
Then you may have options like virtual reality, pre-rendered frames, leaving this as one is good enough, variable rate super sampling, I'll leave as off here, and finally Vulkan slash OpenGL present method auto is good enough here as well. Now we'll click apply in the bottom right and quickly touch on the program settings tab at the very top. From here, you can customize the same options for any game on your system. From the drop down, you can choose games from here, or if they're not on the list, click add. Then you'll see your most recently opened programs. You can select things here and add them, or you can choose browse and navigate to them manually on your system. For now though, we'll select something like Rust, which I've been playing a lot of, but for you, it may be Valorant, Counter-Strike, etc. In here, we'll simply look at a few options. First of all, image scaling, if you'd like to select different sharpness options for different games, low latency mode, you may get better performance in certain games with having this set to ultra compared to just on. And if you want, you can also adjust the maximum frame rate here. While it won't be as smooth as using something like RTSS, it is a lot more convenient. Setting it here and forgetting it should always keep your game capped to that FPS and never anything more, no matter what you have said in game. Obviously, power management mode as well. If you're playing something like Counter-Strike, Valorant, or something highly competitive, leaving this as prefer maximum performance may give you slightly better performance using a little bit more power, just to make sure it's always running at the highest, quickest reaction time, etc. And that's that's it. We practically run through everything we need here for the most part. This next one I'll have to pull up a picture of, but if in the far left over here you have an ECC option, you should see something like this. Tick boxes next to your different graphics cards. I know the Tesla and Quadro aren't what everyone has, but if you have an NVIDIA 1490 or 3090 or something like that, you possibly have ECC options. ECC allows for errors in your graphics card's memory to be corrected, which can take a little bit more time, use a tiny bit more processing power, but it really shouldn't have any effect on gaming. If you want to be absolutely sure, just leave ECC as off for better performance. This is really specifically for workstation workloads, etc. Then moving down to configure surround and physics, usually this will be turned off unless you specifically use NVIDIA surround for things like racing sims, etc. In which case this is probably set up to your liking already. And the processor option over here should be set to your NVIDIA graphics card for the physx processor. Why exactly would you want to use surround? Well, if you're playing some Something like a racing game that doesn't specifically support multiple monitors, you can add all of your monitors together, patch them into one massive super wide screen, and you can select that option in any game, stretching it over all of your available monitors. It's great fun to use, especially in different games. Then change resolution, applying your changes that is. All that you need to make sure of here is that each of your monitors that you have plugged in have the highest refresh rate selected over here. Then scrolling down to the very bottom, choose use NVIDIA color settings and make sure that the highest color bit depth is selected as well as the output color depth over here as well. Then the output dynamic range should usually be set to full for the best possible colors on all of your different monitors. That's it. Once you've run through these settings for all of your different monitors, click apply and OK. All of your monitors as well should be running their native resolution or a supported resolution to make sure that nothing looks blurry. If it's too low, things can be blurry. And if it's too high, you may be pushing more pixels than you can actually show, just wasting extra processing power. You can always use DLSS and things like that in games. You don't want to be adding extra blur anywhere on a driver level. Then color settings. This may be specifically managed by something else on your system, especially if you're on a laptop with an iGPU as well, but you can customize this as you see fit. This will work in almost every game. If we change our different color settings here, we can customize how different games look, add extra digital vibrance at the bottom, which is great for games like Counter-Strike, adding more color. But just keep in mind, some games have this completely disabled, like Rust, for example. You'll need to change options for brightness and contrast on your monitor itself, rather than here for games like that. With it customized to your preference, you can apply and continue. It should have almost no impact on performance. Then moving down to adjust desktop size and position, in here, we'll have a couple of different options. Essentially, if you want to play games with black borders, you can select aspect ratio over here. If you want to play games in stretched mode for any reason, select full screen. That's it. If you choose no scaling and change your resolution in game to a smaller resolution, you'll get black bars on all sides instead of it stretching to fill your monitor. Then perform scaling on should always be selected as your display for the best possible performance, but you can choose GPU as well. 
Just keep in mind that having no scaling selected is usually not the best option, even though it may technically have some kind of impact on performance, as you'll be locked to your native resolution and nothing else ever. Applying, we can move on from here. At the very bottom, you may have video color settings, which only applies to videos playing on your monitor, such as through media players, websites, etc. This is similar to your customization that we did up here on adjust desktop color, but it's only for videos in different windows. Finally, image settings at the very bottom. I'd recommend keeping RTX video enhancement turned off as it makes videos, especially on YouTube, look a little bit weird, but you can enable this if you primarily only watch gameplay on things like Twitch, etc., in which case it can actually improve how things look. Using anything RTX will use more of your graphics card, taking away more performance from games, for example. So if you're watching YouTube in the background, RTX video enhancement will use some of your graphics card to make the video look better, taking away performance from your game itself. And that's it. We've now run through pretty much everything here. I've obviously skipped over things like HDR. If you have HDR, you can enable it for better brightness and contrast in games, and it should have almost no impact on performance. It's all your preference. Besides this, there's only two more things that we need to check. At the very top, click Help, followed by System Information. In this little window that pops up over here, look for something called a Resizable Bar. This essentially allows your graphics card to directly read things from your NVMe SSD or whatever kind of storage you're using and load them directly into memory storage on your graphics card, leading to better performance in games. If you see Resizable Bar here and it says No, then it currently isn't enabled in your motherboard's settings in the BIOS and you can enable it there for better performance in games. There was a reason I turned this off, I don't exactly remember why, but it was causing issues with one particular game, I'm not too sure, but in most cases having this enabled should give you better performance. If yours says unsupported, then unfortunately your graphics card is either too old or just the wrong model to support a resizable bar, in which case you can't enable it at all. Mine says no, so I can restart my PC, go into the BIOS, and enable resizable bar there. Just keep in mind you'll need to Google your Asus, Gigabyte, whatever motherboard you have and find out how to do it through your motherboard manufacturer's manual or instructions. Finally, the last thing we'll be touching on is a MUX switch. If you're using a laptop, you may have a specific piece of hardware in it called a MUX switch, which allows you to switch between your integrated graphics card on your CPU, which is much lower powered, and a dedicated graphics card like an NVIDIA, I don't know, 4080. If you have a MUX switch, your games should be able to use explicitly just your graphics card, and you can get way better performance out of it. You can simply Google your laptop and see if you have a MUX switch. If your laptop has a MUX switch, then you're getting better performance. Anyways, you can pretty much stop watching this video. But if you don't have a MUX switch, or you're not entirely too sure, or what it is, you may get way better performance by playing your games on an external monitor. So plug a monitor into your laptop's HDMI, move a game across to it, and see if you get better performance there. If you're getting much better performance, it's probably because you don't have a MUX switch, meaning that that actual HDMI plug on your system is connected directly to your graphics card, whereas the built-in monitor is needing to go through your CPU first in order to display it, using something called NVIDIA Optimus. If you're getting way better performance on an external monitor, just make sure you're always playing on that monitor for much better performance on a laptop. And of course, just keep in mind that you should disable your built-in monitor while you have the external one enabled and you're playing games. You can do this easily with Start and P, which should bring up this pop-up in the bottom right, allowing you to select Extended, or preferably Second Screen Only, which should use your plugged-in monitor. PC Screen Only is only going to use your laptop, for example. But anyways, that's really it. We've run through everything you need to know to get better performance from the NVIDIA control panel. If you'd like to get even more in the weeds with controlling different settings, you can look into something like the NVIDIA Profile Inspector, where you get even more in-depth options, but you do kind of need to be a super nerd to do that kind of thing. But anyways, that's really it for this quick video. Hopefully you found it useful. Thank you for watching. Mine's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.